Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Senor Bellas and in this video we'll be talking about the AP Spanish Language and Culture exam for 2021. Uh, I do have an old video on this and it's linked on this first slide. And by the way, this presentation will be made available to you in the description of the video if you would like to reference it later for links or anything else that you find useful. So let's get right to this. To begin, uh, let's look at the overall test and what everything is worth. So there are two sections to the test. Section one is multiple choice and section two is free response. Let's talk about uh, section one first. So it's broken down into two parts, A and B. Part A is where you read some uh, interpretive texts and there are 30 questions on those weighing about or 23% of the overall test and you have 40 minutes to complete that section. Interpretive texts could be essays, posters, uh, emails, charts, graphs, announcements, uh, fragments to literary pieces, or articles. For part B, the multiple choice questions, there are 35 there and that's 55 minutes. And this is when they combine both a written text and an audio text. And they have, they have uh, something similar to them, like if uh, the first piece is about bullfighting in Spain, then the audio part will also likely be either about the same exact topic or something very similar to it. And then you'll answer multiple choice questions about uh, those two sources afterwards. And then the audio sources could be uh, fragments from a radio show, a blog, maybe an interview between two people, or even a conversation that was um, created for this test. Part two, the free response section, I'm gonna go through uh, in, in detail and show you some examples. But before we do that, let's just really quick point out that there are four parts to the free response. Uh, part one is there's an email reply where you read an email, have to answer it. You have 15 minutes to do that task and it's worth 12.5% uh, of the overall test. You have to write an essay. You've got 55 minutes to do that. You have to do a conversation and a cultural comparison. Um, and those total 18 minutes, but they're not exactly nine, nine minutes each. And we'll talk about those more in just a second. So there are some overarching themes or topics for this test. If you're in an AP Spanish class, then likely you are going through these themes while you're talking about uh, the test and the various activities you're doing in class probably fall within these themes. Um, they are families in different societies, the influence of language and culture on identity, influences of beauty and art, how science and technology affect our lives, factors that impact the quality of life, and lastly, environmental, political, and societal challenges. The reason I came back to this slide is just to show you at the very bottom there, uh, the, for the conversation, you are given a layout of a conversation, which I'll show you in a second, and you are given one minute to preview the conversation, kind of prep yourself for it, and then it just starts. So um, the conversation, the preview is shorter than the cultural comparison, but the actual part where you're talking and listening is probably a little bit longer than the cultural comparison. I just thought I wanted to point that out to you. And the cultural comparison, you have four minutes to prepare and two minutes to present. And we'll look at those more in more detail in just a second. So I have some tips for you for all of the free response sections. For the email, you want to have a formal greeting. Uh, I included one there for you. If you want to use it, you're welcome to do so. So, estimado or estimada, señor, señora, so-and-so. There are many ways you can start a, a formal email. Uh, you only need to know one for the test, so just pick one and use it. Also, you want to have a formal closing. So you can say, atentamente, and then put your name after that. That's a good way to close an email in a formal fashion. Again, if you want a different one, go ahead and look it up. Uh, I suggest that you thank the person for the opportunity, if, if applicable. You must answer all questions. So the email that you're, you read will pose uh, a couple or a few questions, be sure that you answer those questions. You want to ask the person at least one question uh, when you're responding to them. I always suggest to my students to try and ask two questions. And the questions need to be on topic. So if the email they're asking about is volunteering for a relief fund for an earthquake in some country, then the questions that you ask need to be about that. Uh, volunteer job or the relief fund, for example, um, which obviously brings me to staying on topic. Uh, after you finish your email, go back through it, check your spelling, check grammar, check punctuation, and then also watch your time because remember you only have 15 minutes to both read the email and respond to it. So it goes by really quickly. This is just an example. If you want to pause the video uh, and read this, you're welcome to do so, but this is a uh, 
just kind of what an email might look like. For the conversation, I suggest that you look at the introduction. It'll tell you who you're talking to, and it might give you a brief idea of maybe where you guys are or where you met up. And once you have that information, try and jot down any cultural ideas that pertain to the topic because it's good to be able to throw in some cultural knowledge when you're doing this conversation. It will look good on your part when, you're, when the grader is reading your test and listening to your conversation. Uh, scan the conversation and note what you have to do. I'll, I'll, you'll see what I mean in just a second. During the conversation, speak clearly. Uh, be polite, be nice, uh, like you're talking to a friend. Uh, note before you before your conversation begins, or, or is this a formal usted conversation or is it an informal tu conversation? And make sure you stay with the correct one throughout the conversation. Correct yourself if, if necessary. So if you say something and you totally goof up and it was wrong, go ahead and correct what you said. Uh, it is part of the actual rubric and it looks good uh, on your part if you make a mistake and you fix it. Now, minimal stalling is okay. So if, just for example, Maybe the person asks you a question and you want a second. You could just say like, déjame pensar un poco, which is like, let me think a little, and then go ahead and start answering their questions because that is a real part of conversation, so it is okay to do that. Make sure to fulfill the requirements in the conversation. What I mean by this is sometimes the conversation will say, uh, Jose asks you a question, respond negatively, and give another option. So when that comes up, make sure you do that, respond negatively and give another option. Don't just respond negatively and then go off topic about something. Make sure you fill the 20 seconds and then have some useful phrases memorized. Let's look at the conversation layout. So at the very top there left, you can see where it says tema curricular. So the curricular theme is la vida contemporánea, contemporary life. Uh, you have one minute to read the introduction, it says. So the introduction is, this is a conversation with Carla, a, a classmate. You're gonna participate in this conversation because your friend couldn't attend the get together with the academic counselors uh, in which they gave suggestions about university studies. So you know that you've read that now, you're gonna be talking to your friend, so that's tu, and you're talking about university studies, you're talking about your future, where you're going to college and stuff like that. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is scan the conversation. So at the beginning, the other person always talks first and you talk second. So Carla's going to greet you and ask you a question. So you want to really try and listen for that question and be ready to answer it. Because your job in the next one, you can see where it says tu, is to respond with the information that she asks you. So that's your job in your first part. And again, there's your 20 seconds for each of the tus that you see on there. And then Carla will continue her conversation and ask you some more questions. So again, try and listen for her questions. Uh, respond with some details. It's not very specific, but just try and answer her questions. She, on the third one there, she asks you another question. You have to respond with more details. On her fourth one, she reacts to your response and she asks you another question. You have to offer her a suggestion. And, and then her last one, she continues the conversation and she asks you a, one last question. And then you have to accept her suggestion and say goodbye. So what I would have done if this was me probably before the conversation started, since you're talking about uh, academic and university studies, maybe jot down some ideas about um, things that students study uh, in college. Maybe think about, since you're in high school right now, you're talking about college, maybe you could throw in the future tense and uh, use some advanced grammar there. Uh, if you ever have an opportunity to put some subjunctive in there, um, this would be an easy one to do that uh, because you could say something like, you know, if you're talking about your studies and uh, maybe you wanna to go to this college, but your parents want you to go to this college, you could put the subjunctive in there by saying something like, mis padres quieren que yo vaya, right? My parents want me to go, uh, pero yo quiero ir, you know, but I wanna to go to whatever. So it's, you don't have a lot of time. This is the challenge here is you only have one minute to read this introduction and then it starts. So jot down anything you can, make sure you answer the questions or respond negatively or affirmatively, whatever it tells you to do. The two minute cultural comparison We'll look at a prompt again in just a second. You'll read the prompt. You're going to jot down some ideas that pertain to the topic, both in your community and a Spanish-speaking community. The link that you can see on the screen there where it says My Recommended Preparation will take you to a document that's two-sided, and it kind of walks you through how I suggest you prepare for this uh, by making a Venn diagram um, where you can make uh, com comparisons between your community and the Spanish-speaking community. Uh, I also suggest that you 
um, have an introduction and a thesis jotted down because that'll help guide you throughout your presentation. You want, you're going to want to compare uh, one to two points at least and have a conclusion. And this all needs to be done in two, the, the speaking part is in two minutes, but you have four minutes to read the prompt and jot down your ideas. This two minute cultural comparison is kind of like doing an essay, but just speaking it in two minutes with only four minutes to prepare. So it's a super challenging task, but you can do it. So just uh, take a look at the cultural comparison. I'm just looking at the, it's in English and Spanish here. So it says you have one minute to read the directions, um, which are right here. You will make an oral presentation on a specific topic to your class. You'll have four minutes to read the presentation topic and prepare your presentation. Then you'll have two minutes to record it. And then there's some more um, instructions. In your presentation, compare your own community to an area of the Spanish-speaking world with which you are familiar. You should demonstrate your understanding of cultural features of the Spanish-speaking world. You should also organize your presentation clearly. So the, you can see at the bottom there where it says tema curricular. The theme is families and communities. And the question is, what is the attitude of people in, of your community with respect to the treatment of animals? That's pretty much it. And then everything beyond that, where it says compare your observations about the communities, blah, blah, blah. That's the same uh, for all of the, after the, you know, the main idea or the prompt. That's the same. That doesn't change. Basically, what you want to do once you see that question is think about how or what is the attitude of people in my community and how with respect to the treatment of animals, jot down some ideas and then think about what is the attitude of people in a Spanish speaking community with which I'm familiar and their attitude towards the treatment of animals. So just say, for example, maybe you talk, you studied um, bullfighting. Uh, in your class, maybe you could talk about bullfighting and the treatment of treatment of those animals and their people's attitudes with that. And then in your community, maybe you could make a comparison with um, a rodeo and how those um, have some similarities or or some differences. It doesn't have to be that, but those are just a couple things that came to my mind really quick. Or maybe you wanted to talk about um, some animal conservation um, in Costa Rica or something, and then maybe there's a place that takes care of hurt animals. Maybe there's a zoo, a local zoo that takes in hurt animals and, and uh, takes care of them. You could make those comparisons as well. So you don't have a lot of time. So jot down a couple of ideas and start organizing, organizing your uh, thesis and introduction and then go it's pretty fast. And then lastly, we have the essay. Uh, essays, uh, I suggest um, you practice this because time management is important. While it is the longest part of the test at 55 minutes, it is an essay. Like when you think about writing essays in your English classes, often your teachers, you know, gives you days to do this task where here you've got 55 minutes. And that 55 minutes includes the time for you to look at all three sources and plan and write your essay. So definitely practice. Um, think about your layout. You have an introduction with a thesis statement. You're going to have two to three supporting paragraphs. You want to make sure that in those paragraphs, you use all three sources. You have to use all three sources in order to get a five or to get 100% on this section. That's very important. You have to make sure that you're showing that you understand those sources. Uh, cite, cite properly your sources. So you can use, um, maybe if you want to do a direct quotation, you could do that and say, so-and-so says, dice, and then quote that person. Or if you just want to say, uh, segun, which means according to, right? Uh, segun, whoever, and then summarize their words in your own words, you can do that as well. Either one's fine. And then wrap it up with the conclusion. This is kind of what this would look like for you. So the time, approximately 55 minutes. The theme on this one is science and technology. And it says, first, you have six minutes to read the theme of the essay, source one and source two. The theme of the essay is, Will traditional libraries be relevant in the future? So that's kind of what you're going to write your essay on. And then what you have is a text like this. Uh, at the very top there, you can see there's an introduction that says this text um, is about the future of libraries. The article was originally published, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it talks about the use of library, traditional libraries. So you're going to read through that and find information about, if I go back to this main question right here, the relevance of traditional libraries in the future. So if you were to draw out, like, um, if you had a chart, what I would do is maybe make two columns on it and put library relevant, and then on one side, yes, other side, no. And then as you find ideas in here, 
put those into one or the other side to help you figure out which idea you want to argue for. You have a second source, which will be a chart or a graph. So this one says, and this, this section is about the frequency uh, that people visit the library. The graph is blah, 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 in Spain, 2007. It gives you a question, you know, how often do you visit the library? And then it tells you. So you use that information to help decide are traditional libraries going to be relevant in the future? And then, you know, plot your information down on the yes or no side of the, your chart that you've written down. And then source three is a recording uh, about uh, libraries in the digital era. Uh, this report was originally titled Debate Libraries in the Digital Era and it was published on November 30th, 2012. So you're going to listen to this and listen for um, ideas that either support a traditional libraries in the future or are against traditional libraries being used in the future uh, and jot those down. And once you're done with all three sources, you're going to want to pick a side and you need to argue that side. Uh, this is the last slide of my presentation here for you. Again, these links will be available to you on this slideshow, which is available to you in the description of the video. Uh, the first link will take you to College Board's website, and you can listen to free response student samples from previous years or uh, read those free response student samples as well. So if you want to kind of see what they look like, it also includes the scores they got as well, so you can hear some good ones. For the conversation, there's this YouTube channel called United Spanish, which has been creating and compiling uh, practice for this. I think they mostly have the conversation practice available to you, but uh, they also have um, other free response sections practice available as well. So I suggest you check them out. And that's it for this video. If you have questions, maybe jot, drop that in the comment section. Let me know. Um, leave a like if this video helped. Thanks for stopping by. And I hope to see you guys in the future. Good luck on your AP test. Hasta luego.